I like Skittles as a candy, but I'm not quite sure about wearing a watch that looks like a bag of Skittles on my wrist. And that's what we have today in this Casio G-Shock model from the GA400 line of watches. Now this is a version called the Breezy Rasta. It's a Japan only version. They have a number of models of this version of G-Shock in various colorways, but we have this crazy colorful version here today that we're going to review. I unboxed this watch about a month ago, gave my first impressions about it, but in today's video, we're gonna do a full review and go into more details about the specs and features and functionality of this Taste the Rainbow watch that reminds me of Skittles. So let's get right into it. Well, here it is, the Casio G-Shock Breezy Rasta. That's what they call this. And I think there's a couple of different watches with that Breezy Rasta title. And this is the GA400CM. 4AJF. This is a Japanese model. You can see from the tag back here that I've left out in case anybody's interested to see that. Uh, there's the price in yen. I'll just leave that there for the video even though it's a little bit blurry right now. Uh, I've come to call this watch the Skittles watch. I don't know if someone mentioned that in my first unboxing video or not, but I think that fits pretty good. Other people mentioned that it reminded them of the Flash or something like that. But it definitely has a Caribbean type feel with the colorways. That's that's how they get that breezy Rasta name, uh, I would assume. But let's jump into the specs and features of this watch. We'll put some of these up here next to it. You can see the model number there. The movement is 5398. The case material is resin. Now, as far as some of these measurements go, I, I put a couple of different ones up there. I put uh, the thinnest and the the widest because you can see uh, on many, like on many G-Shock watches, there's all these notches and things. So the thinnest measurement there would kind of be in between these notches and the widest measurement for case diameter would be at the widest point from this side on the left to the crown guards on the right. So that's where those measurements are. It's not a it's not a small watch by any means. The largest portion is 51.4 millimeters. That's what I measured it at. And I did the same thing with the case thickness, tried to get the, the thinnest portion down in one of these notches and I got 15.7. But then if you flip this over, you get this bumped out portion here and that's about 18.1 millimeters. So it's quite thick as well. And the lug to lug is something we have to talk about. There aren't really your typical lugs that you would get on a, a, a watch like the, the Citizen Promaster Tough here. Uh, there aren't lugs like that, but where you can kind of push back the bracelet, that's where the end of the lugs would be considered. So I measured from there and I got 54.75 millimeters. And I'm gonna throw in some wrist shots here so you can see it on my wrist. My my wrist width is only about 53 millimeters. So this watch doesn't fit me properly because of the large lug to lug. And so I really don't feel comfortable wearing a watch of this size. And then the way the bracelet uh, or the strap is constructed, you can see there's not a lot of flex here. So these portions of the bracelet do not conform to your wrist. So if you have smaller wrists, uh, unless you taped it down or something, it's not going to sit on your wrist like this. It's going to sit out like that. And so really, it's almost like the lug to lug is from the farthest portion where the, the, the strap sticks out. And so I measured that as well and found that to be 67 millimeters from the, the the protruding portions of the strap there. So it's quite large considering the lug to lug. So I, I can't really recommend this for someone with smaller wrists like mine. Mine are 6.5 uh, uh, inches in diameter. Anyway, the band material is also resin. The water resistance is 200 meters and you can see the weight 
there, a very light watch as well. I'm not going to go through all the functions and features manually in this video, but I am going to leave a couple links in the description to some good videos where if you're interested, you can see how to properly use this watch and toggle all the functions. I'm going to leave one from Watch Geek. He did a, f a really detailed video going through a GA400 model and all the features and functionality and how to use those. And then I'm going to leave one from Casio Japan as well. But just to talk about some of the features, of course, being a G-Shock, this is a, a, a shock-resistant watch, and the thickness plays a big factor in that. There is an LED backlight, which we'll look at. There's a 60-minute countdown timer where you can set uh, from one minute and count down from one minute all the way up to 60 minutes. There's a stopwatch. This watch does have world time, five alarms, full auto calendar, and they say that it has a three hour battery life. This is not a solar powered version. Uh, it's not tough solar, uh, unfortunately, so the battery will die after a few years. Keep that in mind. Now there are many color variations of this watch and that's a good thing because this Skittles colorway probably doesn't appeal to too many people but if you are interested there are a lot of, of different colorways of this model. I'm talking about design and durability and talk about the case first. First thing I'm struck with is, is how thick and chunky this case is. It's Definitely typical of a G-Shock watch, the design. You just look at it and you say, yep, that's a G-Shock. All the, the angles kind of has an industrial look. It's, it's large, it's thick, it's sturdy, and uh, definitely modern, even though G-Shock has been producing watches for quite some time now, decades. You, you can always tell a G-Shock watch, but still they have a, a modern feel to them. Some of the buttons on the case are reset or recessed, excuse me, like these ones on the left. Some do protrude a little bit, um, just to, to take note of that, but they're all easy to manipulate. Uh, talking about the crown, the crown is unique. In my initial unboxing video, uh, I didn't know what to make of the crown. You know, I, I initially thought it might be screwed down. It's not a screw down crown, and it doesn't even push or pull uh, in or out at all. It's just stationary there, but it does a lot. It does more than just adjust the time. It adjusts many, many things. So if you turn it just initially from the home screen where the time is, if you turn it, it it's going to bring you to the, the countdown timer function. Now, I've had it preset to 30 minutes, and that's actually what this sub-dial is here. This is the countdown timer, so whatever you have the timer set to is where the arrow is going to be pointing. So I have it set to 30 minutes. You can also reach the timer by toggling the mode, and there's the timer. But like I said, you can get to it quickly by just turning the crown. We're not going to go through all the things, but you know, as you do many different adjustments if you go into the world time section if you want to change the city you use this crown so there's new york and all the other cities that you can see there you you use the crown to do that now the crown design um it reminds me uh, of a, a turbine or something like that I'd like to hear what you think the crown looks like down in the description. What does it remind you of? To me, it looks like some sort of turbine. And I, I don't know if you can hear it, but when you manipulate the crown, you, you do feel a click and you, you hear the click as well. I think you can hear that. Um, so just take note of that as well. Um, moving on to the dial... Uh, there's some nice depth to this dial. It feels really deep down in there, and there's a lot going on with different angles, of course, different colors. Um, but I like the layout. Of course, we have two digital displays, one on top and one on the bottom. 
I think they're placed in there nicely and they, they function well in the different modes. <clears throat> uh, then you have the sub dial, which we've already mentioned, uh, that is for the countdown timer. And when the timer is going in the background, if you have that set to, let's put it back to 30 minutes, and I start that, and it starts counting down, uh, you can of course go back to the, the home screen with the time and day and date, and it, this arrow will move and start counting down as that timer is counting down until it gets back to zero, and then there will be an alarm as well. Now you notice something about the dial, there's writing uh, in various different places, shock resist, the water resistance up top, G-Shock and Casio, excuse me, and, and various other things. You notice there's no seconds hand, but there are these digital seconds that are going in each of these displays. That's what these are. You can see them counting down there, each of the seconds. Uh, so there's no seconds hand. And, and I, I like the style of these hands, the hour and minute hand, and the cut out look where you can see right through them. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, something also to take note of, if those hands are ever in the way of the displays and you're trying to do something or see something on those displays, you just hold down the light button and click the mode button, and those hands will move out of the way temporarily to, to be free from those screens and to, to get out of the way. And so that's very helpful if you're trying to use the stopwatch or set an alarm and the hands are in the way, uh, you can move those out and you just click mode again and they'll jump back to the right time. So that's a nice feature that many Casio analog watches and that have analog and digital functions, they, they utilize that feature, which is really nice. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's, uh, let's talk about the light. There's no loom, obviously, on this watch, but let's check out the light function real quick. Well, there's the light. You can see that it is a yellowish, orangish light color, but it does the job for sure, even though the camera's not really wanting to stay in focus. The light can be adjusted to stay lit for 1.5 seconds or 3 seconds, and you can change that in the adjustment mode of this watch. Now, I forgot to mention it in the beginning when we talked about the specs and features about the lug width. It's really hard to determine. They have unique lugs here. You can see uh, it's very short underneath if you want to consider these the lugs. It's about 15.85 but if you measure the, the strap from the widest point up here it's about 29 millimeters, so it's quite wide, quite thick up top, and then this tapers down to this long, large portion to, to be about, what is it, 21.6 millimeters uh, thick right there, and uh, uh, the, sh the strap is nice, definitely feels solid and durable. Uh, you've got the, the holes there for air to pass through and keep your wrist cool. Uh, the buckle is really nice. It's signed with G-Shock and Casio Thailand underneath. You got the dual tang uh, here as well, which adds for the, the sturdiness while it's on your wrist for sure. Uh, but just like Casio does normally, these their straps are strong and, and durable for sure. Let's talk about the, the price of this watch. I picked this breezy Rasta version up off of eBay and I got it for $163 shipped to my house. And so I think that's a pretty good price. Now, like I mentioned, there's a ton of different colorways in this, this model and I'll leave a bunch of those in the description, but you can find various models of, of the GA400 from around $100 to $200, maybe if it's a really special version, it'll get more than that. But it's pre a pretty reasonably priced watch, for sure. Now, I, I brought 
another Casio that I have, my ProTrek PRG270, which I wear often. And you say, wow, those look pretty much similar in size. How come you can't wear this one? How can you wear this one? Well, actually, the size as far as case diameter here is just a, a slight bit wider than this watch as I measured it. But the difference is is the, the, the lug to lug. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this one is, is shorter and it actually bends a lot more and conforms to my wrist a lot better than this breezy Rasta version does. And so because that lug to lug uh, difference, uh, I feel comfortable wearing it even though it's the same case diameter. So that's a, a very important measurement. I just wanted to take note of that. So when you're looking for a watch, if you know the width of your wrist, uh, if you know that measurement and you know the lug to lug, you can pretty much determine if that watch is suitable for your wrist. If the, the lug to lug is longer than the width of your wrist, it's probably a watch that is too big for you. And that's the case for this one. But let me hop back in front of the camera and I'll give my final verdict of this Casio G-Shock. Well, there you have it. That's the Casio G-Shock Breezy Rasta, one of the GA400 models from Casio. And although I don't like this colorway personally, uh, maybe there's someone out there who does. That's the beautiful thing, especially about G-Shock watches. They put out a watch, and a lot of times they put it out in a variety of colorways that you're bound to find one that suits your taste. I like the overall design of this watch. I love the features and functionality. For me, uh, as we've seen, I, I wouldn't be able to wear this comfortably because of the, the long lug to lug here. Uh, for my smaller wrist, it doesn't work. But if this watch came in, in smaller dimensions, I would feel comfortable and fine wearing it in a different color way. Uh, so saying all that, I, I really think overall this is a great watch, uh, just a, a number of great features that come with it, and then you get the G-Shock toughness. This watch is no doubt tough as nails and will last you a long, long time. So there will be a number of links in the description if you're interested in this watch and other variations and colors of, of the GA400 will be down there as well and I'll leave those for you for purchase. And if you choose to click on those, a lot of those are probably affiliate links and they would help the channel greatly if you did that. If you enjoyed this video today, please let us know by leaving a like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a lot. We're, we're steadily growing and adding subscribers to our channel. We're, we're within sight of that thousand subscriber mark, so I'm getting excited about that. And once we hit that thousand subscriber mark, we're going to do another amazing watch giveaway. You're not going to want to miss that, so subscribe right now if you're not already. All well, that's it for today's video. We'll see you next time on J-City Reviews.